Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today, we're going to do some dimpling and countersinking. So we've talked a lot already in this series about using round head, universal head rivets. But what about if you want to make your airplane go fast? You want it to be smooth. You don't want any bumps sticking up. Well, in that case, you're going to use countersunk rivets. Then a countersunk rivet is a flat head with a little taper so it sits down inside the material and everything is flat and smooth. Now, in order to make that work, you need to have a dimple or a countersink hole in your surface that that's going to fit down into. And so what I'd like to show you today is how to make those dimples or how to make those countersinks. So what we have here is we just have a piece of aluminum. Think of that as a piece of wing skin or tail skin. And we've pre-drilled some holes and we're going to dimple that. In order to do it, we're going to use dimple dies in our pneumatic squeezer. You can use a hand squeezer. You can use different sorts of dimple dies that can be used in different uh, devices like a C-frame or a great big, uh, great big frame squeezer, um, or even a set of dimples that will uh, that'll be pulled with a, with a hand riveter. So there are a lot of different ways to do this. But we're going to use the, the pneumatic squeezer. And I've set the dimple dies. There's a male and a female. And you need to pull, pick the size that's right for the rivets you're going to use. Today I'm going to demonstrate using AD3 rivets, so the, the small ones. And you want to set it up so that when it closes, you can just barely spin the dimple dies. That'll give you about the right clearance. You don't want it to be too tight or you'll, or you'll really mash your, your material. So they should just barely spin. Now, you can dimple anything up to about, oh, 32 uh, uh, thick aluminum. Above that, you're going to end up be uh, countersinking and we'll cover that next. You can also countersink 032, but this is, this is thinner material. So basically you're going to hook, making sure you've got the, the male side on the side you want to be the dimple, and then you pull the trigger, and we now have a nice dimple set in that skin. We'll do a couple more of those. We'll do the whole line so that we can make this work. And don't ever get your finger in between here because you will punch a hole in it with the nose piece of the dimple. Now, if you're going to put that onto a piece of substructure like a rib, you have to realize that it's now going to sit proud of that, so we're going to have to dimple the substructure as well. So we'll go ahead and do that. Same technique. Notice I'm doing this on a piece of material that has the blue plastic on and still on one side. You can do it with the blue plastic on or with the blue plastic off. There's a debate about that. In the end, it probably doesn't make a big difference. You're going to want to take the blue plastic off, of course, in order to, to rivet anyway. So I think it's best to, to just pull it off early. So now, this top piece will sit very nicely down into the dimples. We can click all that together, and then we can drive or squeeze our flush head rivets. Just to show you how that rivet's going to sit down in there, It'll be nice and flush to the surface. But what happens if you're going to uh, use substructure which is thick? There is no way that you are going to uh, dimple the, this thick eighth inch piece of, of metal. So we're going to have to countersink that. And we'll talk about that next. So countersinking is essentially building a little dimple in a heavy piece of material using a drill-like piece of equipment. So a countersink bit is installed in a countersink cage and the countersink cage pushes down so that you only get a certain depth of, of uh, countersink. You're going to have to adjust that and play with it because every single piece you're going to do is, is never assume that your countersink is set properly um, and, uh, and always test it in a piece of material before you uh, commit to doing your actual airplane parts. We use this in our electric drill because it's easier to put different sizes of bits in and out. So we've pre-drilled the holes where we want them. And now we're going to put the nose piece of the bit down into the hole. And then we're just going to pull the trigger and push down. 
And now you can see that we've got a nice countersink in there, nice hole or uh, countersink dimple that'll, uh, that our dimple will fit into. So let's do the other few of those holes. And I tend to rock the tool a little bit to make sure that I'm not having it tilted at all. So we get a nice even countersink all the way around. Okay. There we've got nice five countersunk holes. The next thing we want to do is make sure that everything fits well together. So in this case, we're going to it, we, we put our top sheet on, and once you've engaged the dimples in the countersink, it's not going to move side to side. Of course, if you let it pop up, it will. So that'll tell you that everything lines up, and then you want to take a look and make sure that your sheet is sitting nice and flush to the substructure to make sure that you've done a good job, because if it's not sitting flush, you're going to uh, be sitting up a little more. And in this case, I actually think that we could probably dimple those a little bit deeper, or counter, countersink those a little bit deeper. So we'll adjust the, the countersink. We'll pull back the little safety ring. And I'm just going to pull back the adjuster and take off a couple of thousandths more. And we'll do each of the holes. some more chips, put it together, and now I think we're sitting a lot, a lot more flush. So we're a little bit better and we're happier with that. That's all there is to dimpling and countersinking. You're going to find that sometimes it's tricky working too close to a flange. They have countersink cages with one portion of this removed so it'll go in tight. Um, there are also dimple dies that have little the edges cut off so that they'll fit in close. You'll have to play around with it and do it right. And don't be afraid to experiment on scrap before you get into your real aircraft part. So thanks once again to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring this series and thanks for watching.